It's the Fellowship of the Geek Show, a weekly podcast about comics, the comic book industry, and other geek pop culture. Music courtesy of Manny the Martyr. And now, on with the show! Hey there, everybody. It's the Fellowship of the Geeks podcast. My name is Thomas Schick, and joining me for this episode is Mike Marlowe. Hey, gang. Les Webster. Hello, all. And Liz Newman. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Super. Unbelievable. <laughs> that even echoed in my headphones. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> You're on a play of bomb. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, we can't say that. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Should we start over? <laughs> no. Absolutely I didn't, not. I didn't get a hum from, from that guy, Les. Come on. Harumph. <laughs> hey, watch, watch your it. ass. <laughs> Hope everybody out there is doing okay. So what's been going on in your corner of the galaxy? Yeah. Okay, what is Liz's problem? She has been... She's been very quiet. I don't get this. <laughs> Am I muted again? No. <laughs> Hello? What the fuck, guys? <laughs> Dang. Hello, Rangoon. Yeah, that's, it's like she's requiring more to wind up for this or something. I don't know. We are, we are, uh, clearly, we are not properly prepping her before show. I guess so. Hello, Cleveland, you're on the air. I, I usually write this stuff down because, you know, I'm a little it's, scattered. But, like, as soon as you ask me, my mind goes blank, and it's like, you did nothing. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like the microphone problem earlier. <laughs> <sighs> well, we just had Thanksgiving. So I hope you guys all had a very good Thanksgiving. Uh, and um, oh, okay. I, yeah, <laughs> I was here, not alone. Brandon was here with me. So I decided to find um, <laughs> Thanksgiving horror stories. They have quite a few. <laughs> if there's any good ones, I didn't find them. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that works. Right. I watched one. It was called um, Thanks Killing. And it, it, as soon as the movie started, I mean, just the opening credits, I, I knew I was in trouble. But it was kind of one of those. It's like, I have to see what they're going to do. I mean, it's so bad that I've really got to see what this turkey's going to do. Now, <laughs> turkey. Yeah, like, turkey. It was turkey a turkey. did all this. Yes. A turkey was the killer. Yeah. A, a, a psycho turkey. And his catchphrase <laughs> is gobble, gobble, motherfuckers. And that's the turkey. <laughs> I mean, right. Just any any bad cliche you can have. It, it was in this movie. Um, yeah. Opening scene. The reason I knew I was in credit is Wanda Lust. And she is a pilgrim who apparently didn't know how to shut her shirt all the way. <laughs> so she's running through the woods from a turkey. Um, boobs, you know, just bouncing everywhere and everything else. And that's when it's like, yeah, if this is the first five seconds of the movie. <laughs> You're in for a total ride. <laughs> So after I, I get through watching this mo- this bad, bad movie, um, I find out, I, I get to Googling, and they've made three of them. Oh, I thought. Let me explain this. So I'm like, you know, the first one's so bad, I have to see the second one, right? That's that's almost the rule. Not, so it's I not get my rule, like, that's for damn sure. <laughs> well, I heard it was, Mike. Yeah, maybe you guys' rule, I ain't. Mm-mm. I think at this point I was kind of thinking, where the fuck do you go from that? I mean, yeah. So many places. It goes so many places. 
Oh, well, they found a place to go. <laughs> oh, good. I was worried there for a second. <laughs> now, I could not find the second one. So I thought, okay, I will just watch the third one. And the third one starts off by telling you a story that the first movie was so bad that they skipped the sequel. <laughs> And that the sequel um, on these tapes, there was only one in, that made it in survival. You know, this is the movie telling you this. There's only one that made it. And now the, the gobble gobble motherfucker turkey is mad because they torched his movies. Second scene in this movie started off with puppets. Puppets, guys. <laughs> <laughs> one looks straight out of Sesame Street kind of puppet. And the other one was a bisexual space worm. <laughs> How can you tell? Oh, they tell you. <laughs> okay, good. I wouldn't want yeah. to be left out of that information. Yeah. They make it plainly obvious what this little worm is. But I, I, I with the introduction of puppets, I couldn't. I, they, no. They, no. Um, the, the worst thing of the first movie is how bad the turkey looked. I mean, he's got like this, you could plainly tell the turkey wasn't real. You know, he's plastic head, like rubber mask kind of plastic head kind of thing. So the third movie is actually him and he's married and he has kids. So it's not just one bad turkey. Now you have four bad turkeys. <laughs> Like I said, that's when it's like, no, I, I can't. I have watched some pretty weird shit, especially since being on the podcast. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You're not blaming all of that on us, are you? <laughs> some of the sure, weird things I've seen. <laughs> sure sounds like she is. Uh, that's the impression I'm getting here. <laughs> it's like, no. But I did finish part uh, three of Thanksgiving. Uh, I, I, I'm just glad that you showed a some taste and b some restraint. Right. You know, I. I, I was, want to know. Excuse me a second. I want to know, Mike. Where was the the restraint? She stopped. I stopped. She turned the movie off. Yeah. And, and what the was the other thing? The worm was too much for me. <laughs> that was the breaking point, really. <laughs> Uh, I'm, the other thing I just threw in there because it sounded cool, I've never heard of it really. Never seen it in in live action. Sounds like she may have to post that as to where you can find it. Oh God. The thanks killing. <laughs> thanks killing. Killing. Yep. Um. Okay. Actually, they have it on Tubi. But I actually wound up getting a channel from Amazon. It's like an indie channel. And basically, they should say this is where all the bad movies. <laughs> so I was able to watch that one there. But I don't think the third. I think the third one's on there. What is the name of that channel? And we've lost less with that. We all want to know what the name of that channel is, of course. I moved all my bookmarks. Well, why would you do that? Right. I was trying to organize and it look a little better. And... <laughs> I will admit I have seen Thanksgiving. I saw it a, a few years ago and I was like, oh my God, what is this? But that's as yeah. far as I went. I only went through the first movie, and but I mean, I could have quit, but I was like, I'm this far in. That I'm was me. Just, I have to see where they let's take just, it. Let's just see how goofy the deaths are, and and then say, okay, well, this was a waste of time, and yeah, on. And it'll never come up again, right? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Never. Enter Liz. Mm. <laughs> Well, the synopsis for the third one says, raunchy puppets battle a talking killer turkey on Thanksgiving. That's the third one. That's the third one? That's the third one. I think um, I'm going to skip the other two and just go straight to that. <laughs> well, there is, the there, there, yeah. Yeah, there is no second. There is no two. Yeah. 
<laughs> right, because this series just... is so bad it can't count. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The second one was so bad that they, you know, it, they never saw the light of day. Uh, don't buy into the hype. And the name of that channel is Indie Club. <laughs> hey, that's they, an original title. Yeah, they do have a, a seven day free trial or whatever, and then I think it's like one that's like two bucks a month or something. But they had a couple of cool um, Christmas horror stories that I was wanting to see before I cancel it. So I think that Santa Slay's on there, Silent Night, Jack Frost, that kind of stuff. Oh, so. oh, oh, oh Jack Frost. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably make the round of bad movies before I cancel it out. <laughs> <You know? sighs> oh, sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, other than that, um, I haven't really done a whole lot. I, I kind of, I've, I've kind of enjoyed not doing anything. I had the week off, so I took the week off. Cool. Oh, but one other thing. I don't know if I can pronounce his name. Colombo? T- t- <laughs> Del Tormo? Guillermo Del name? Toro? There you go. He has um, Pinocchio. Yeah, I think it's at the movie theaters now, but December 1st. They're going to have it on Netflix, I think it is. And I don't know. Out Netflix? Of, I, I'm wanting to say that's where it's going. I was kind of surprised by that, too. I don't think that um, I don't think Disney has attached themselves to this one. <laughs> I think they attached themselves to the Tom Hanks one. And this is just kind of. I don't know. I don't is is Pinocchio a Disney or Disney original property or is it one like Winnie the Pooh and Alice in Wonderland? Uh, yeah, it's got it's going to be on Netflix. But everything I've seen, all the trailers and everything, um, he said you can watch this with your kids. But it's not made for your kids. So if, if Del Tomro is telling you it's not made for your kids, please don't make your kids watch this. <laughs> you know? Pinocchio was originally a book in 1883. Okay. So that's how they're doing it. So I'm sure it's more like that, the original book. Yeah. yeah. But all kind of, of like, the kind trailers. Kind of like the Winnie the Pooh movie. Huh? Kind of like that Winnie the Pooh movie. Yes, but I don't yes. think he's taking it that far. I think this is the the Pinocchio story. Oh, I mean, but there will be one. The original Pinocchio story is kind of creepy as it is. I mean, you know, a, a parent. I mean, don't under. I understand the the grief that a parent goes through when you can't have a child, but then you make a wooden boy and you start talking to it and. I don't know. It, it's just kind of creepy. And then he turns into a jackass and smokes cigars. And, you know, it's not your typical Disney, straight you know. Up, straight up rip off of Frankenstein, honestly. Right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I think with his spin on it, I, I'm going to enjoy this When Some of the other ones I've seen you post about, like Bambi and that kind of thing. No, please don't. Please don't. Well, uh, Bambi was originally a, a, a book in from 1923. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a Disney pro- property properly. Yeah, but you know, yeah. there's a difference, and uh, of course, I have not seen um, Del Toro's yet. I, I'm going to. I, it, it's on my list as soon as it comes out. But some of these other ones. I mean, I love a good horror story. I, that's that's my jam, you know. But do we have to do that with Winnie the Pooh or Bambi or Peter Pan? I mean, Peter it, Pan kind of is a creepy story, too. But, you know, guy stalks there, a girl from her window and flies off with her to Never Never Land. Yeah, that sounds. If it's public domain, it's all, you know, it's all fair game. 
Yeah, but some things should be left innocent. Okay, that's you an know? opinion, though, right? Yes, yes, it is an opinion. Okay. But I just don't understand the the, the reasoning behind perversing something like that. Sure that's you, me. Sure you do. You know? We talk it, about it all the time on this show. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I told you guys about Cocaine Bear, right? Bear in the middle of the woods finds 50 pounds of coke and he eats it and fucking goes crazy. That's cool. Now, if they would have made that Yogi, no, no. I mean, <laughs> well, they can't Why make you that Yogi that? because that's actually owned by Hanna Barbera and all that. So. <laughs> right. So there's a difference. You see what I'm saying? You know, if they would have used a childhood character to tell the cocaine bear story, it'd be kind of fucked up. But instead, it's just a bear. You know, it's not your childhood memory that I'm shredding with cocaine bear. You know? so yeah, I okay. Just, I, I, I will never – I, I, I won't tell you about the the Rule 34 thing then. So, you know. <laughs> rule 34. Yes. Boy, it's Rule 34. If it exists, you can make pornography out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's true. It's just waiting for Pornocchio to come out. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure there has been. Lie there to me, Pinocchio. <laughs> There's a movie called The Erotic Adventures of Pinocchio. Oh dear lord! Is this one of those '70s Italian things? Yeah, '70s, yes. Italian, no. Mm. Do you guys remember that horror story that had the puppet in it? And he was like a dirty, raunchy little. No, this was like a wooden puppet because he was telling one girl to watch out. He'd give her splinters. Well, this sounds like something straight out of the 80s to me. Yeah, it mm. was. I'm sure it was. It's but not I can magic, see... is it? Uh, so once you get to a certain point, who the hell cares? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I said, this was a puppet and he got tired of his handler. Because he okay. could do his own thing and didn't need him kind of thing. So I think he tried to kill the guy. So he's kind of, he was like Chucky before Chucky was a thing. <laughs> Is that magic? I've, I've never seen that film. I, I'm curious since it's Anthony Hopkins. Magic. I can only remember the cover and it's of the puppet's face like darked out almost. Okay. So magic is with Anthony Hopkins. And uh, Anne Margaret. Okay. Yes, that's him. That magic was what you were talking about. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Because his dummy's name was Stats. Yep, that's him. Yep. That's a good movie. Yeah. Like I said, it, it had its its quirks. <laughs> now, now imagine if they would have told you that was Pinocchio. <laughs> I would have said yay. Well, you hear Pinocchio talking about giving a girl splinters and stuff. You know, it's just some things just you know. Let's... And for the record, it's on Tubi. It's not on Tubi. Magic is? Everything's yes. on Tubi. Everything. Nearly everything is on Tubi. So you know what I'll be watching here the next day or so. <laughs> oh, I I love that movie. I think that's a great film. It, it takes you into the off uh, the world of someone being really off. Yeah. And thinking that the holy the, crap, Anthony Hopkins, Anne Margaret, Burgess Meredith, Ed Lauder, David Ogden Steers. This is a nice cast. Mm-hmm. I just remember the beach scene in that movie. I may have to go back and rewatch this one too. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very nice cast. I, I, I want to see it even more now. Directed by Richard Attenborough. Oh, wow. Yeah. No slouch that guy. No. Nope. Heard that name before. Mm. And was written by William Goldman. Based on his book. Oh, was it a book? A book? Okay. Uh-huh. Originally a book. Okay. Mm. 
who he won Academy Awards for Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid and All the President's Men. And also wrote the novel The Princess Bride. Sure yes. Is. And Marathon Man. Which I have not seen that movie. I want to see that one. Oh, you need to. I, I mean, I'm I'm familiar with some of it, like, is it safe and all that type of thing. But I have not actually watched that film. I, so. Then doesn't that one have uh, Roy Scheider in it? Yes. I, I, I know Dustin Hoffman and Sir Lawrence Olivier. I don't know beyond that, but Mike seems yeah. to confirm that he was in there. Yeah, when I, I pulled it up and he's one of the faces there. I haven't nice. seen it either. I would be willing to check that out. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, anything else, Liz? No, we said that's it. Like I said, if you guys... um. By the time this drops, that will be on Netflix. So, yep. okay. Cool. All righty, Mikey. Ah, uh, geez, I gotta follow that. Um, <laughs> follow puppet. Rabbit holes galore. <laughs> um, follow killing uh, a turkey that kills. Actually, I can. Yeah. I think I can do it. I can. Well, I can at least attempt to class the joint up after that conversation. But. Uh, <laughs> Now, why would you go and do something like that? Because I have to. <laughs> um, it's in his contract. It, it is. It's entirely <laughs> my contract. Uh, I just wish there was money in my contract. But anyway, um, I, I actually managed to, because, I mean, I didn't have the whole week off, but I had some time off. I managed to sneak in a documentary. Woohoo! Um, and the documentary I snuck in is called Schlock, the secret, uh, no. the, the secret, uh. the secret history of American movies. No, yeah, it really is. It's got oh, an exclamation okay. mark and everything. Um, it was a documentary in 2001 and it's on Tubi, not surprisingly, um, cause the trick and everything is on Tubi, um, as we've already established. Uh, but this this is actually really fun because it kind of it it's it kind of covers the like the main like twenty ish years. I mean, it goes back even further, but the 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 main thrust because I can't think of a better word um, is like the twenty years of exploitation movies. Um, I mean, it like I said, it goes all the way back like pre to like pre code and the and the code. The, the film code, the original film code back in like 34. Um, and then kind of shifts forward to the basically 50s and 60s it covers mostly. Um, Roger Corman figures very prominently in this thing. Um, but they also talk to Myla Normie, um, Vampira, because they're, they're kind of they're kind of marking that as like the beginnings of the kind of the exploitation movement. Um, and they talked to the guys from AIP and a bunch of other people. Dick Miller shows up in this, so you know it's good. Um, but yeah, a bunch of they talked to several filmmakers from that time because I mean this was 20 years ago, so they, many of them were still around. Uh, many of them were not young then, but um, but yeah, it's, it's actually really interesting. It goes into some <laughs> some some. Takes it takes some some angles on it that you might not think have thought of normally. Um, there's actually also really well it 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 goes into kind of some some to some level it goes into like the personal stories of the people making those movies at the time. Um, talking about uh, like the. Um, Oh God, my brain stopped working. I think it was the siren. Um, the uh, the nudist, the, sound of it stopped working. the nudist colony movies and and the stuff that kind of came out of that and the nudie cuties and it goes through all of that stuff and it's they're talking specifically to the people who were making some of these movies at the time and kind of their lives and, and what they were thinking about at the time and so it's it gets kind of to a personal level with that which is actually really kind of a cool take. Um, it also has this one like two minute sequence, which is really funny. Um, kind of in that time frame, even 
um, talking uh, talking about nudity in film and that stuff and and it has an interesting theory as to the, the death of exploitation movies but I'm gonna not spoil that because it's kind of an interesting idea but it is definitely cool I, I definitely recommend checking it out cool do you recall who wrote that the documentary itself yeah uh I can see if I can find out real quick. I do not. Really I'm, I'm thinking this is a, Ray a Green. writer. Ray Green. Does it give any reference Did to say Red man? Green? Ray Green. <laughs> okay. Any reference to what now? <laughs> to uh, the he was the writer for Tulsa World. Trying to remember his name, John. I can't remember his last name. But this writer had done a book called Schlock, and he essentially did the same coverage. Hmm. And I remember meeting the guy and talking with him at a convention many years ago very nice personable guy uh, and I'm happy to say I, I believe I still have my copy of his book but I think he even referenced the movie you, of which you spoke in one of his discussions Oh, cool. that, that was kind of fun. Kind of, kind of cool. Neat. Mm -hmm. That is neat. Well, I think it's funny you talk about classing the place up and you bring up schlock, but hey. Hey, hey now. <laughs> you people back off. <laughs> is that like totally, Bigfoot in a tuxedo? <laughs> it was a totally different schlock even. Yeah, I, I remember thinking it was amusing that it had the same, essentially the same title. I was like, hmm. Right. <laughs> there didn't seem to be any connection, as far as I could tell. It didn't mention that movie at all, so. Oh. I think it was just using the, the term in the, in the general, in this case. Yeah. That was cool, though. Yep. It, it was fun. I think you have time one. for a documentary. That means you finished Strings of Power. <laughs> I didn't finish it. No, I, no, this was a break from it. Honestly, okay. I wanted to. This, this, and what we watched for tonight was a break. I'm jumping back in this week. Cool. I was giving you a hard time. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Take your time, so you see what I did. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, take my time, but hurry up. <laughs> Pretty much. I want to know what you're thinking. We'll get there. Tonight or eventually? Eventually, not tonight. Oh, no, no. I'm only halfway through. Pressure him does not work, people. It does not. <laughs> it does not work. No. That's why I never give him any pressure. You'll get to it. That's okay. I always say no pressure after. Uh -huh. God, you sound like my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> See, my therapist is like, you've been here for two hours. You go home now. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Some, some, somebody found John Panette on YouTube. <laughs> I thought that was Louie Anderson. Mm -mm. Uh-oh. Nope. <laughs> nice try. <sighs> That's it. Pass the book. <laughs> I thought that was Louis Anderson because he was talking about going to um, 
Chinese food buffets. That's John. And that's what they told him. Oh, okay. There is a vague physical resemblance between the two guys, but they are very different. Okay. He's got dark hair, doesn't he? Yes. If it's what I'm thinking. Yeah, okay. That's all I got. All righty. Les? Okay, so we're not doing any dialects or accents now, right? <laughs> hey, hey, mate. Just, just our usual ones. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, I got my sandy squirrel down. <laughs> <laughs> when people tell me I sound like that. It's like, really? I didn't think I had a Texas accent, but... Mm. We know you think you don't have a Texas accent. Yeah. We're aware. (laughs) Pardon me, Governor. Good day, mate. Even that has a Texas accent. And who's that other guy? At Kim, uh, not Kim Jong. That's the the leader guy. Um, the guy who does the mass singer. I think it's Kim Kim something. But he, he said his best impression of a white person. Charge it to my credit card. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> mm. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, nope. bad accents kind of derailed us. <laughs> no. Us. Really? Us, she says. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Les. We are waiting. <laughs> Not sure I want to venture out there. <laughs> Like like the famous man said, please, Mr. Custer, I don't want to go. <laughs> oh, man, now I'm going to be singing that song. <laughs> <laughs> Gets you for all those baby shark shit songs you gave me. <laughs> uh, For me, I guess I really don't have much. It was a nice break that we got to have. But, you know, the the regulars of watching films and series, and I know that it's been posted how upset some people were with the new series Wednesday which I thought was kind of fun because it's a mystery. It's not just a, a show about the character. There is a mystery involved. So it's one of those. You just sit tight and and it'll come around to you. A mystery. Yeah. Zoinks. (laughs) Jinkies. (laughs) Ouch. And I thought we were done. Oh, come on, man. You've, you've been on this show a long time. You know better than that. <laughs> that was Thomas's fault. Right. Beep, beep, beep. It's my fault, but how quickly did she jump in? So, you know, come on. <laughs> I couldn't leave you hanging. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, he'd be happy to be left hanging. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, I do. I haven't started that one yet. It's only I been was on going about to less than a week. Yeah. And Tim Burton, I should have watched it the first day, but 
Oh, I don't know. Sp- sp- speaking about that, I, I, I need to see if I can find it again. Because someone created a meme saying, it's saying, oh, it's Wednesday by Tim Burton, so this should be happening. And someone superimposed Johnny Depp on Wendy, Wednesday's face. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got it wrong. It at least would have been Helena. <laughs> But it's Johnny Depp. He can do everything. So why not do Wednesday? You know. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's cool. Thank you. I've, I've, I've the re- response I've been seeing has been positive for the most part. I mean, yeah, I did post that one comment, but I was like, yeah, you know, of the two options, what he was, what he was mentioning, I was like, yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> you know. I could kind of see her as both, though. The way she treated Pugsley and was always blowing him up and smacking him or hitting him or throwing knives at him. I, I could see both, you know. It's so much fun with with the with the mental torture. The, the, the... Yeah. Which she is good at. <laughs> or should be. Mm. So, but hey, you know. Like I said, you enjoyed it, so that's that's awesome, and it seems to be getting some rather positive reviews. So that's 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 good to hear. So a lot of people mm-hmm. are liking it, and that's that's always a good thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Tim Burton needs a win. <sighs> okay. What was his last Dumbo? Was that not a win? Yeah. No. It didn't do too. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> it's a live well. action. If it's a live action of an animated movie, that's you know I, I, that yeah. that stuff really needs to stop. But hey, it's not going to happen. And you know, just to throw this out there, I had read an article recently where Tim Burton was talking and everything else, and he had said that um, I think there's something right now. I totally blanking on what it is there's something he's working on with disney right now and when this is over he's like i'm not working with disney anymore i i think what's happening is a lot of his creative control is being controlled and you can't control a guy like tim burton you've got to give him the room to you know get all that genius <laughs> I don't know the word for it, but you've got to give them a little leeway because creative people aren't just an A to B kind of person. You know, they're A to D and maybe E and then we'll come back to B. So they Disney's kind of cramped that. And so he's like, this this will be the last thing that we do together, which he should have learned when they canned him after Fox and the Hound. So they told him then that was not Disney style. And it seems like every time that he puts something out with Disney, they've done something to kind of take the Tim Burton out of it and put the Disney in it. And that is kind he of just brand. needs. Well, yes. And, yeah. and that's what he's saying. He he does it because it is Disney, you know, but I think now he's looking for something where it's him and it's not something that someone can rein him in and control him and have to fit this little box because Tim Burton doesn't fit in a box. You know he's. Yeah, but if and, he's playing if he's playing with Disney's toys and sandbox, then you know. Yeah, yeah. and he you know he's done it. Yeah. yeah, and he's done everything they've asked him to. But at the, now he's at the point of, I, I'm done with this. Well, that's fine. He I can need leave to do... and start doing whatever he wants to do. That's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So that's. Yep. And I'm kind and, of excited to see where it would go. Yeah, we'll get another Planet of the Apes. Woohoo! <laughs> you know, <laughs> you never know. But when you described him, Liz, you said he was doing A to to B to D to G to H. You made him mm-hmm. sound like Guitar Zan. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you just did a string of old songs today. <laughs> Good ones, mind you. Well, the, you know, the, the, he's, he's been listening to that classic music. Yeah. When you have someone who's Rock creative, though, mm-hmm. 
it's it's hard to lay out a plan and because most of the time they're thinking on the fly. And I, I, I think the first not the second, the the first Alice in Wonderland, they kind of gave him that leeway where he could, you know, there was if you watch the behind the scenes set, there were so many things that he did and shot that after he saw it and kind of worked through it a little bit more, he was like, I don't want that. Let's do it this way. You know, a creative person needs that. They don't need to be, okay, it's 10 o'clock. It's, you know, you got to do this now. And that's the way it's been after that. So it's kind of like they gave him that do what you want kind of thing. And now it's like, okay, now you got to do it the way the mouse wants it. And this is what we want. You know? well, well, the way you explain that, it sounds like he's, he did a bunch of stuff and then, is basically scrapped it and then is redoing it all. Then that's that sounds that's expensive, expensive, right? Well, but from looking at one shot to another, one of the main things that he kind of had to play around with and work with was the queen's head. He couldn't, no matter what he did, no matter what effect they used, he was like, I just that's not the way that I'm seeing it in my head. So, you know. On someone else's budget, yeah, you kind of got to be conscious of that. But had they not have given him the room to kind of play with that and figure out what was going to work, that would have sucked. And that's one of the best things of the movie, you know. And it was just little things like that that, you know. And and stuff like that is the reason why they're saying that this new Avatar film that's coming out here in a couple of weeks is going to have to make two billion to make back the money. <laughs> you're like, well, that's not going to happen. Then it's going to lose yeah. money. That, I, there's, I, no, there's not been a movie out there that's made gone over one billion. Yeah. If I'm a, if not mistaken. No, you're to right. Make, to make two. Just to make back the money, which 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 was originally two hundred and fifty million, and I guess you're talking about whatever else is added to it, and not even talking about marketing, which I hadn't seen much other than a uh-uh. couple of YouTube uh, videos. So, uh, well, there's some there's some tie in with some retail company. I don't remember because I, I I saw that I was like, wow, okay, and I was and then. Oh, I forgot whatever it is because right at the end it says, and go see Avatar, was it The Way of the Water, December 11th. So, you know, it's it's like, and now they're doing that just two weeks before the movies come out. They have done mm-hmm. nothing to promote it. Mm-mm. It's like nothing. I don't, I don't see it on? happening. I think he waited too long. I think he should have, I, I mean, I'm not one to tell people, you got to quicken it up, but when did the first one come out again? It's How been many years 13, ago was that? It's been about 13 yeah. years at least. And now you're going to do a film that I guess this follows right after a movie that happened 13 years ago. So it's kind of like, hmm. And, and, the, and the, the interest that they had, those people are grown up and it's gone. Just saying. Not, you know, well, majority. I don't, not all. I, I, I don't know because it because they put it back out in the theaters a few weeks ago in like a two week run and it did real well then. So yeah, there's going to be a little yeah. It, I mean, I, I don't remember. I don't have the Cameron. numbers in front of me. But. I kind of see James Cameron like Tim Burton. I don't think it really matters what he puts out to some people; they're going to go see it. You know, like at me. I would go see anything that Tim Burton signs his name to. So I think he's going to get that success. But two billion. The the two top grossing movies that I can think of right now is Endgame and Joker. And both of those hit a billion. So it's kind of like, is Avatar going to go up to those two movies? I don't know. I, I don't it's know. Gonna be, it's going to be kind of hard to reach that when we already know it's going to be a three hour and 10 minute movie. Jesus. So that means it's going to be less. That's going to be less runs per day. And, and wasn't he one of the directors here recently bitching about people wanting to watch movies at home? And then you put a three hour movie in a movie theater and wonder why I don't want to be there. I don't I don't know. I don't remember if he was bitching about. People going to theaters are not. Are, I, I remember him complaining about people complaining about run times, yet will binge watch a show at home. That's different. I, yeah. 
I, I've, he, he, he talked about that, but as, as a, you know, I, 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 I don't. I, I, he may have, and I just don't remember. But I, yeah. I'm just. I remember that. Yeah. Because he, ta- he, he, he talked about the. He's, he's talked about the runtime, and he says he didn't want to hear about that when he knows there's people out there who will sit there and watch a show, a, a series, spend spend about I don't know seven eight hours watching a particular show, you know, in consecutive order. Mm-hmm. So he says he but don't. What else am I doing while I'm doing at that? At home on the couch, right? Yeah, or I'm on the com- uh, the computer and I've got another tab up and I'm playing a game, or I've got my phone on, or I can pause it and go pee, or make some popcorn. I mean, I yeah. just don't sit in a chair for eight straight hours to binge watch a movie or you know a TV series. So. Plus the fact that you can always stop it and oh I need yeah. to put the laundry out and you know put it you know yep. take out the washing put it in the dryer and then I can sit back down and watch another thirty minutes or so of, of the show so yeah yeah I, I, so it's I, I, I'm, while you're sitting there finishing it up you know I can't do that I'm, so, I'm sorry I brought it up but I just yeah I, yeah I it's yeah I yeah I I don't know I just I don't see it grossing what he wants it to i think it'll do well i don't think it'll do in game or joker well or aquaman well but i don't know we'll see yep well it's it's coming yep. up pretty close so we'll anything else less i uh, just want to say i saw where uh, a an actress received her star uh, on in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and announced that she is going to be leaving acting. Oh, who is that? Christina Applegate. Oh, uh, yeah, it, I'm trying to remember. Doesn't she it. have MS? Yeah, that's yes. what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. she does. She I sympathize. Wants, she wants to. She's an advocate. Mm-hmm. For for the treatment, so it'll be interesting how things handle are handled now. Well, she she's said on for. Her, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say she was she's on her last season of uh, Dead to Me, which is it's a great really show. Good. Mm-hmm. And you know she hasn't made a lot of public appearances and things since she's gotten her diagnosis. Because um, now she's using a cane to walk, and she's like, I just didn't want to mess with it. So I have a big you go, girl, because she rocked that cane, and that cane looked beautiful. So, you know, if that's what was stopping her, I hope it doesn't stop her anymore because, you know, I thought that was amazing that she did that and came out. She didn't have to tell anybody, you know. No, but she had members of uh, Married with Children Mm -hmm. uh, on her side, which was really nice. That is. See David Faustino and uh, Katie Katie Stahl there. I know her and Katie have been real tight. I guess it would be kind of hard to play somebody's mom and not get attached to them, though, you know? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah i that was that was cool i i'm sad to, i didn't know she was retiring though i can understand but i'm glad that she's getting back out and telling people because she is a beautiful face for ms one that people will listen to yes yep best of luck to her mm-hmm. yeah uh okay uh for me um i've actually spent uh a bit of time this past week uh watching a brand new video game that has it's been released and a lot of the streamers have been have been playing it and i've been, i've i've enjoyed the game uh it's entitled 
The Devil and Me, and it's part of the Dark Pictures anthology. This is the fourth installment. Um, it's been put out by Supermassive Games and Band- Band- Bandai Namco. Um, this is the four of eight video games that's going to be in this series. And the story on this one is uh, a production team, a team from a docu-series called Architect of Murder uh, has been invited to go to this hotel that's located on, on an island that is a replica of the murder castle that was owned and operated by H. H. Holmes. And H. H. Holmes is an actual person. He was a ser- he, he was a serial killer from late 1890s to early 1900s. Mm-hmm. So there's a little so there's a little truth in it. And apparently that's yeah. that's the case with with all these with all these games is there is a little historical part of these games where even though the main story is all fiction yeah. so Holmes uh castle was in chicago i believe yes yes but this all put a movie out about him yeah mm-hmm. interesting uh but this takes place in michigan so uh, they so the team goes uh, has been invited to go up there and it comes at the opportune time because the series is failing um they're kind of they've kind of grown apart. The director has has a lot of is, financial issues and this type of stuff, and but he's got this big ass ego. Uh, the host is ready to leave. The director of photography doesn't know what he wants to do. He's been given he's been given the opportunity of his lifetime, but he's just coming up with excuses. I'm not trying to take the job. And then you have the grip who's has the attitude from hell. And then you have intern sound person who's just happy to be there and trying to figure out what the hell's going on. So you, so you got this team in chaos that has this opportunity to film in this replica of the hotel. And of course it, everything it's, it's not what, what you think it is. And, it, it kind of goes south from there. Uh, I definitely love the butterfly effect in these games. This is not the first. This is not the first game to have this. It was like originally until until God, I can't speak now. Until Dawn, which has also been put out by Supermassive, where everything you say and everything you do affects the outcome of mm-hmm. the game, and you could. Poss- and you can possibly kill everybody in the cast, or you can, act, or you can have them all survive. Depend that really depends on how you play the game, which it, it, it's it's kind of cool to see because I have seen several different endings. I have seen it where one survives. I've seen it where they all survive. I've seen them where they're all killed, and it's just. It's just kind of interesting seeing, you know, just how this one, you know, decision, should I yang or should I yang, and that determines the future of of these characters. And it's really cool. I think the story is pretty strong. I definitely like the fact that they brought in the historical element with, with Holmes, which I did not know this person exists until this game, and then I started researching. Looking into this guy, I'm going, wow, okay. Really? I could have sworn we talked about him before. H.H. H. Holmes? Yeah. Okay. I don't remember. I so. well, I mean, that's fine. But I don't expect you to remember everything. Mm. Well, you, you may have, and I just... It, <laughs> you may have, and I, I just... I just, I, I don't know. I just I, no. I just didn't remember, so that's, that's okay. No, Liz, you do have to remember everything. Yes. Yeah. Tom, Tom doesn't have I, to. I thought... Do. I thought we did one on him too. Oh, I'd I have to go back and look at. I, I don't notes. think we did an episode yeah, on him, but I think, I, think he's probably, I think he's come up. Yeah, so someone yeah. might have mentioned him in, in passing and talked about it. Yeah. Hell, Mike, you might have seen a, a documentary and talked about it, and I just didn't catch it. I don't know. Uh, I definitely would like to because it sounds like 
I, I mean, he was he he was caught, tried, and convicted for murdering one person. And mm-hmm. and uh, but he admitted, but he confessed like twenty seven. But from yeah. what I have read, even some of those that he said he, he confessed he compelled, uh, that he killed were still alive at the time. So some yeah. of the stuff you can't take at face value. He used a lot of that kind of to um, – what's the word I'm looking for? To stay his execution. Kind of like I'll tell you where more bodies are kind of thing, and that yeah. bought him a little more time. So I, I think that's why he confessed to so many. Probably. But, you know, serial killers are like rats. If you know of one, there's at least five more, you know. Well, the thing the thing was, from what I what I read is, is he not only was he did he kill, but he was a pretty smart con man. Yeah. Um, and I mean, just some of the stuff that he did, I was like, wow. I mean, at one point, apparently he was married to three women. Yeah. Who the hell's like, time okay. for that? Yeah. Right. So um, here's his prison sentence right there. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah, this is a really interesting game. I know it's gotten some bad reviews. I've seen some criticism of it, but some of the stuff I was hearing is like well someone's like, Well, why didn't they do this? Well, why didn't they, they were all together, why didn't they attack him? I'm like, Have you seen a horror movie? Mm. Shit like this happens all the time. All the time, yep. You know, it, 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 some of that stuff I've 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 dismissed. And some of it's like, okay, well, that's kind of a valid point. But the, yeah, it's a like I said, it's a real interesting game. I kind of like the characters. Um, I I've only seen one of the other Dark Pictures video games. It was for Little Hope. I saw bits and pieces of it well way before. But I've actually taken some time here recently to watch most of that one. That one was interesting. Uh, but the other two I've not seen because one's involving a ghost ship. And the other one is dealing with vampires in Iraq. Which I'm going, okay, props for originality. I hadn't. That's something <laughs> I hadn't thought of before or heard of before. So, okay, props to you for that. So, and of course they they've already announced the rest of the of, of the games. The next one is supposed to be, oh god, what is it? Da, 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 da. It's taking it's taking uh, place in space. So that's that's going to be a different. Oh, it's a uh, directive eighty twenty. Is that's going to be the next one? And there was actually there is it was there was actually a little bit of teaser in the game, and then there was a full teaser at the end at the end of the credits. So if you got the game and have not seen that, there you go. Interesting. Oh, that is pretty interesting. This is all a, this is all a, a kind of a, you know, Jason, Michael, uh, the hunter and yeah. in, in, in the prey, you know, I, 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 and actually there's a lot more of a saw element to it with some of the traps and stuff. So, Believe me, there was one. There was one of them I was going, "Oh God, did y'all really take the sale of the saw films?" Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I, I got, a, I got a sense of deja vu here." <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a really good game. I, I don't know how it is to play, but in terms of watching and trying to enjoy the story. It's it's been pretty good, although I got a nitpick. One thing, and, I, and I'll try to hurry this up real quick. Dear listeners, if you are a streamer, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, Facebook gaming, whatever, if you are streaming a story game where everything depends on what is being said by the characters and what is being done, please do not talk over everything please <laughs> it bugs me to death when they talk and then all of these stuff said wait wait what did they say i couldn't hear what they said and i was trying to read the closed captions but you wouldn't shut up 
<laughs> and, and and guys, I under I understand you got to engage with the chat. You got to make it fun. You got to be you got to be entertaining that kind of stuff. Part of being entertaining is knowing when not to be entertaining. It, exactly. Yeah. Especially when you're playing these type of games. Like I said, right. if there's you're stuff. You're going to have a talk show. Have a talk show. You don't have to play a game while you're doing it. There, there's yeah. stuff that's being said that it is trying to tie things together. And, and uh, there's literally some of these, these streamers going, I don't understand why they're giving us this information. I was like, well, if you shut up, you try to, you can probably try to piece this all together and figure out what the hell's going on. You know, yeah. it bugs the hell out of me. So I found some that was, I mean, they didn't have a face cam. They didn't have a, a, a microphone. They were just playing the game. I'm like, bless you, sir or ma'am, for doing this. So I can try to figure out what's going on and listen and, 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 and you know, be on page with, with the game so I can know what the hell's going on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Ah. <laughs> anyway, that's that's my soapbox for right now. <laughs> uh, mm. Before we get into this week's discussion, I do want to point out that we do have a Discord that y'all can join us. Um, we post a lot of news items, stuff for fun, uh, music videos. We'll do some fun activities like a movie night or something like that. Um, sign up for Discord is free. Uh, the app is free and the app stores. We do have an open invitation on our, uh, website, www.thefellowshipofgeeks.net. So, uh, if you like like hanging out with us during the podcast? Well, come hang out with us on Discord. Uh, there's usually one or two of us on most of the time. So, <laughs> yeah, we're not too far away. Yep, yeah, not too far. Not too far. All right. Um, it is that time of year again. It's the most wonderful time. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I I just knew she would be the one. That's 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 what they want you to believe anyway. Mm. <laughs> so for the next couple of weeks, we'll be uh, talking about a, uh, Christmas specials. So these are a little bit older. The, um, not well. really. Sh- well, true. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I see some of these as a kid. <laughs> yes, <Exactly. it's>, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're not, I thought they're not really shown anymore. A couple of them I can I can uh, understand because it involves people that are not household names anymore. Um, but we'll get we'll get to that soon. So uh, for this week, we are talking about a couple of animated specials. Uh, we are going to talk about a Garfield Christmas and Ziggy's Gift, and there's a reason why I picked Ziggy's Gift. So, um, which one would y'all like to talk about first? Whichever. You go. Why'd you pick Ziggy? Because the music is by Harry Nielsen, and Mike and Les are big time Harry Nielsen fans. And I had mentioned it sometime last year or so that he had that he did the music for the special and realized that they had not seen the special. I was like, okay, I got to find it so we can watch it. You found it. I I found it. (laughs) I remember seeing this one on TV. Really? And it, yeah. Wow. I. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. It was in Colorado. You're going to take that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not that old. It wasn't like a stone with a flame behind it, you know. <laughs> well, it's not What's dog's that? gift. I mean, come on. Right. What's that cave painting or anything, you know? 
them. I love this story. It was cute. Um, cute little message behind it from a guy who doesn't wear pants. You know. <laughs> I thought that. Uh, oh, okay, I want to. I want to see you talk your way through this one. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't wear pants, right? It's just a shirt. With Walking legs through the out snow. Of I would hope he's wearing pants. Jeez. Well, he puts on Santa's robe, but most of the time it's just a shirt. That's it. I mean, hey, you go, boy. <laughs> well, underwear. And then, Right. For, right. for and some there of was... us, it's a, it's a it's a a dream. It's a thing to be idolized, you know. Not wearing <laughs> pants, hell. And I I think I do remember, like in the comic strip, he went to the office every once in a while. So I think he has been in pants, but for the most part of his comic career, he's just a shirt. He was a poo bear. <laughs> it's an artistic I, I've always... choice. Yeah. I've always liked him because it seemed like no matter what bad happened, he kind of kept that keep going, you know, and that's the same way this cartoon was Um, things falling on him and, you know, all kinds of misfortunes, but he's still setting out to do something nice for everyone else. Um, Now he talks in the comic strip, right? It's not. Okay. I, I don't, I don't remember. Is that, is that strip actually still going? I think it is. I think they keep it up on the web. Is it, well, is it, I mean, or is it new strip? Yeah, I was about, I mean, yeah that's what I, I was It's saying. probably reruns, like it's they did Peanuts reruns. there for a while. But, yeah. Um, like I said, a cute story. He's he's always, you know, like I said, it, he has every reason in the world to be pissed off, and he's not. <laughs> But on this story, to walk you through the story, if you have not seen this one, I think this came out in, what, 1971? Uh, 82. 82? Mm-hmm. You oh, saw it well, that's it why I saw it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, But I thought it was like an older cartoon when I saw it when it was on. I kind of so, like I Rudolph think. and that kind of stuff. Mm-mm, this was new. Yep. Um, Ziggy finds out that... You know, basically, people just didn't turn up for Christmas this year or in 82. They didn't turn out for Christmas. Um, Some people weren't going to eat. Some, you know, kids weren't going to get enough toys and everything else. So he sets out to make sure this happens. And I don't know where he got his magic um, cauldron from. That'd be pretty cool if Santa left me one of them. Mm. (laughs) I'm down. But it. It seemed like any time he needed something, he would pull out of the cauldron and it was there, whether it be money or, you know, whatever. So um, a cop, you know, because the news story you hear at the beginning, because also while people are not turning up, there's a lot of burglaries and people are robbing the Santas and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, so they're looking for crooked Santas. Well, Ziggy winds up being a crooked Santa on purpose and this cops following him around and everything else and you see Ziggy doing all the nice stuff given to charity um he set some turkeys free which was so sweet <laughs> and um <laughs> he um the cop rounds up all these guys finds out you know the guy who scams Ziggy but he still thinks Ziggy's bad and they wind up in front of a children's orphanage and the kids see him, so instead of beating Santa up and taking him in, they decide to go inside the orphanage. Oh, bug. That's a good story. <laughs> and, um, you know, of course, then, you know, the, the bad guy who's robbing Ziggy all through this cartoon winds up giving the toys away to the kids. And then the bag becomes magic instead of the cauldron. And I understand how that happened. Because I know Ziggy in the comic strip does not have magic powers. So I, I, I'm still unclear where the magic yeah, powers magic. Christmas. You know, maybe it was Christmas. It's Christmas magic. Christmas magic. Mm. Okay. So all was well. You know, the little kitty he rescued winds up getting a good home with the kids. Who, I'm sorry, if I can't afford to feed my kids and give them Christmas present, you better not drag a cat up on me. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Now I've got another mouth to feed. Thanks, Ziggy. 
Or, but or a meal food. for the kids, but anyway. <laughs> or, or his food. Hey, guys, go share with the cat. But, um, yeah, I, it, like I said, it was a cute story. I like the ideal of giving, and you don't have to get in order to, you know, be the happy. The Christmas spirit of giving. Yeah. yeah. But see, a Christmas spirit, yes, that these are things that you should do all year round. But I don't know if I'd call it Christmas spirit as much as a, you know, I don't know. Just general niceness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I enjoy doing things for people and yeah, I guess kind of like Ziggy. He wasn't looking for anything other than to make people happy. Yeah, See, I, a day I, off from his not pants wearing job, right? So he's now, had to spend it the, being nice. <laughs> the only problem about you know a guy with no pants around little kids, but <laughs> the only problem I had with this cartoon is when it first starts, the song that's playing. Why is the very beginning of it, does it say kill, kill, kill? I missed that part. <laughs> and then it goes into joy, joy, joy. But the first three are kill, kill, kill. I rewound it, and I don't know if it's because I heard it in my head that way, but I cannot think of a happy word that even sounds like kill, chill, thrill. <laughs> So it's kind of like that's kind of uh, like. Guys, I think she watched it right after watching Thanksgiving. Mm. <laughs> that's why she was so happy when he released the turkeys. Mm. <laughs> gobble gobble. <laughs> the I Samuel know. Jackson turkey. <laughs> mm. But yeah, then at the end of the movie her cartoon, they play the same song, but it's not there. He starts at joy. So it's kind of like, huh. And like I said, it, I, I'm I'm more than like 89% sure I'm hearing the wrong word, but I oh, cannot yeah. think of what, what it would be. Yes. I believe the title of the song was Give Love Joy. I think but somehow, how does give sound like kill? That's a great question. What Which brand of cough syrup were you drinking at the time? <laughs> No, 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 no. This is Thomas's link that I use to watch this. <laughs> but you're the only one that heard kill, 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 so. Mm. Somebody watching too yeah. many Christmas horror movies, I think. Mm. I think so. <laughs> oh, for real, if you go back and listen, just listen to the first three seconds and see if you guys can tell me what he's saying there. And, and you're also gonna... It's not give. <laughs> well, I mean, keep in mind that this is a, a crappy video, which is ripped from a crappy VHS, probably. <laughs> the, the, the sound quality itself might have just been wonky. I don't remember what it sounded like. I wasn't paying that much attention to the first three seconds of the thing. But yeah, right. it may have just been the sound was wobbly because of the recording itself. Could be. I'll have to go back and listen to it now that you've said give, but because you know how it is. Once you hear Paul something in your that. head, Paul Paul <laughs> I, I've heard and some of Harry Nielsen like stuff kill, before kill, too, kill. and it, it wouldn't be surprised by kill, 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 but probably not <laughs> right. in this context. Right. Probably not for kind of you know, children's to special. put it in. Mm. Yeah. They're ice skating around, you know. Kill them all. <laughs> So yeah, I I thought this was cute. I liked it. It was cute. I liked it too. Yeah. And he never says a word. Nope. And it's kind of cool the way they handled that. Like when he opened the door, oh, you're here for the Santa job. So he didn't have to say anything. You know, they kind of always implied what he was saying to you. So I thought that was kind of cute, too. They led you along. Yeah. And see, now I'm curious about the comic. I It, it had to have been thought bubbles, I guess, then. 
and not speech bubbles. But I could have sworn he talked in the book, in the comic. If I recall, the character didn't talk in the comic strip either. No. No so thought bubbles. Thought bubbles? No, nothing, no, nothing like that. I don't believe so. I think everything was implied by other people around him. I thought I saw one where he was telling the cat that he had catfish, and the cat and the fish were both upset. And for the record, the 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 strip is still going on. Uh, Tom Wilson's son took over in 1987, and it's been doing doing the the strip ever since. So it is still going on since 1971. There you go. That's awesome. All right, Google. Hey, Alexa. (laughs) (laughs) See, I unplugged her in here. Yeah, right. Or I would ask her right now. Plug back in so I can say play Baby Shark. (laughs) I think she's learned her lesson on that one. (laughs) She does better than to keep that thing plugged in when we're around. Damn. And I didn't know that the baby could listen to music from her tablet on those from anywhere. So she's all the way, you know, where they live. And it's like, what? What? No. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of. So, Les, your thoughts. Okay. A couple things. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He didn't like the turkeys. <laughs> you do know what they call turkeys that can't speak properly, or how they what how they talk? Boggle, boggle. Uh-uh. A turkey. Garble, garble, garble. <laughs> <sighs> I like now, turkey better. <laughs> now back to the original question. Kill, kill, kill. Um, <laughs> I have not been a big fan of the comic strip. So I really can't give it a solid. Um, the story was interesting. I will say that. But it's it's not original. I think we've all seen stories similar to that at one time or another. The I, I appreciate you bringing in the fact that it was Nilsson that did the music. It struck a chord with me and I ended up watching the point right after I watched this. Struck a Uh, chord, huh? Huh? (laughs) Struck a chord, huh? That too. That's what she said. It struck a chord. I was like, okay. Go Uh, ahead. Okay. It, It was fun. But like I said, I'm, as not being a big fan, I wasn't all that taken by it. So. I'm still shocked uh, you don't like Ziggy. I'm I'm the Scrooge of the group. <laughs> really? Yeah. You think so? Say, don't take my job. Yeah. To me, it was just, it was bland. Sorry. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised, but. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, I liked it. I mean, it is cute. Uh, Ziggy, the, the the strip was kind of hit or miss with me. You know, didn't get all, you know a lot of them. A lot of them are, but I I thought it was a 
nice little episode, uh, special. Definitely like the music. So, I can't really add anything more to what than what y'all said. It's not it's not something I go to every year. Matter of fact, this is the first time I've seen it in I don't know how many years. Like I said, it's not something that's shown that often. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I don't know if I saw it in '82, but I, it it may have been late, maybe late '80s is when I first saw it. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't I didn't know he had a special. And I think that's the only one he's done. I think that's the only Z special. Mm-hmm. It is. Which was kind of interesting because, well, I mean, Ziggy's never been a big hit to where there's a lot of merchandising on them, but there was some. You know, he, he, he was, he was. He still shows up on coffee mugs occasionally. Yeah. I, I mean, there's some merchandise. He's easy to draw. Stuff. Right. <laughs> So, I mean, it's, it's you know, there's not a lot, a lot of merchandise or, uh, you know, there's a, just this one special. So, I mean, hey, that's 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 more than some other comic strip characters. So, hey. It's more than I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. We want to we wanna go ahead and move on to Garfield. Why not? Yep. Now, this isn't Garfield's only Christmas special. I've seen others, but um, what was the name of this one again? A Garfield Christmas. A Garfield Christmas. Well, oh, that's too complicated, Very, guys. Mem- very memorable, obviously. Mm. <laughs> Made a big impression. Right. Yeah, obviously. Um, yeah, I... Now, see, this is the one I didn't care too much for. Maybe I'm just not a cat person. <laughs> I like cats. Um, I like Garfield and Odie. Odie's my favorite, of course. But um, <laughs> his brother, what's his brother's name? Dog Boy? Doc. Boy. I've, I do not Doc understand Boy. why. but And why he gets so upset being called that. That's why I thought it was dog. Because you're calling me a dog, man. You know. <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> um, <laughs> right out of the gate. Good oh, God. Damn. <laughs> no mercy. In for the kill. <laughs> mm. um, I, I, this one was kind of weird because I, it, most Christmas specials you have that, Christmas moment, you know, that that whole moral of the whole 30 minutes of what you just watched. And I don't feel like this one did. It was just kind of a Christmas with Garfield, kind of what a normal Christmas would be for Garfield. Um, I thought it was sweet with the letters to the, the old lady. You know, that was sweet. But, yeah, this one, like I said, I could have sworn he had other ones where it dealt more with like Santa Claus and that kind of stuff. That was a little bit cuter. Garfield I'd, cute. I'd still watch it, but you know. As long as it didn't have Doc Boy in it, jeez. <laughs> I don't like that man. And in the um, the later Garfield cartoons, he was in a lot of them, and I think that's why I didn't like him because he's just whiny and dumb you know kind of john's a, not too kind of much smarter stereotypical but... younger brother yeah who looks just wow. like his dad so <laughs> who looks just, just like trash brother. younger brothers hey i am the younger <laughs> brother so you know yeah yeah i'm the baby but yeah um, this yeah. was the one you liked, right? <laughs> <laughs> now that I've totally trashed this, watch the list come on. No, I like Doc Boy. He's the best character in this. <laughs> Doc Boy. Doc Boy. Oh, I still don't know the distinction. I have no idea why. What I, I, I'm, I'm not familiar enough with Garfield stuff to know why that's the brother's name. I think on the cartoon they've said, and it was just one of those that was kind of... Eh. You know, 
Okay. He's just being a little bitch, but yeah. Damn. <laughs> Someone close to your heart, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Cool. Um, I mean, I liked it okay. It was fine. It was Garfield. It was slightly snarky and in the ways it needed to be, and it was cute in the ways it needed to be. And I don't know. I, 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 I liked the Garfield comic strip back in the day. Um, I never got into the animated series. Um, I've not seen anything recently to make me want to go back to find the animated series either. Um, I don't know. I think Garfield worked better on paper. He did. Um, but generally speaking, this was a fairly nice little Christmas special. I mean, it was it was a little silly at times, and th there were some story choices that were made that were a little silly and yeah whatever it's fun it's not meant to be real deep it's only 24 minutes long so whatever you know, it's fun. Yeah. yeah i think both of them were i know i don't regret the time i spent watching it it's not bad but no, no, you already laid into it. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Garfield. So I just, I think on the series, the cartoon series, they've done a couple of Christmas ones, which to me just kind of seemed more Christmas. Okay. I have no frame of reference for that, so. Yeah. I can't I I'm not I can't argue with you or anything. I mean this seemed plenty Christmas to me, but whatever. It's fine. Yeah. We all have opinions. Yeah. And Google's not giving me an answer. On the Garfield wiki, it says he hates being called Doc Boy because he already started wearing long pants. What? <laughs> that makes perfect sense. <laughs> well, I'm hoping you'll explain it to me because... Yeah. If you can't figure that out, I don't want to spend my time. <laughs> I don't care enough to actually try to figure that out. <laughs> Less your thoughts. Uh, once again, this is a, a comic strip that I have been able to avoid all the, these centuries. <laughs> uh, Boy, that gives me a Christmas gift idea for you. Don't <laughs> right. even think about it, young man. <laughs> the whole compendium, you like, man. Yes. <laughs> How many best I'll go in halves. <laughs> Then I know who, what two people to blame. <laughs> I, uh, I enjoyed some of it. Uh, when I saw who some of the singers were, I was pretty freaking amazed to have Lou Rawls as part of this group. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, I enjoyed the Music by Chapin. Because uh, being a, a writer, songwriter, and a writer itself, himself, is pretty amazing. Um, I'm going to say I'm not going to make sure I see this every year. Because I know that I'll have to be doing something. So I can't really give away the time for it all the time. But overall, 
maybe uh, maybe a C. But yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna go much higher than that. But that's just preference. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, that was about what I'd say is about a C. Six out of ten. Maybe a little high. <laughs> five point five. Dang. It's working its way down fast here. <laughs> I don't know. Can, can I hear change five? The channel, can I hear change five? the channel. Change the channel. And we got five here. How about four point five? We have four point five. We have four point five right over there. How about you, sir? <laughs> I can't be an auctioneer. I'm sorry. Can't talk fast. I have trouble talking normal speed. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Just in general. Seven years into the podcast, he finally admits this. But anyway. <laughs> uh, you can become host anytime. Like, <laughs> nope. All right. Nope. 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 I'm just the guy who makes the jokes. Mm. Well, okay. I'm one of the. Okay. Four of us that make the jokes. Mm. So you can have that too if you want. <laughs> Garfield is kind of hit or miss with me, and this is one of those that's kind of a miss. Um, I mean, it's okay. I, I guess, I guess, in hindsight, Garfield's more. I, I, I like him more when it's a comic strip than in a thirty-minute cartoon. I don't know. Yeah. It's like it gets it gets old kind of quick. The. So. It doesn't transfer. Yeah. You know, there's there's few of them that do. Uh, sure. You know, Peanuts does. Peanuts does real well. It does. Or at least in my opinion. Um, I can't think of any others right now. I can't. Th- who who else was a comic strip that's that's been turned into a cart uh, cartoon? I know, like, Family Circus had a couple of specials, but they didn't have a series or anything. Their uh, specials were good, though. Yeah. The Family Circle one. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't think of any any others right now. Right off the top of my head. Betty Boop. She was not a comic strip before, though. Okay. That's okay. It's, it's just... One was of those Felix, things. Was Felix the cat a comic before? Yes. I liked Felix better than Garfield. <laughs> I liked Heathcliff better than Garfield. Do y'all remember him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who? Yeah. Heathcliff? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's probably the best part to just go ahead and take a break <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're interested these, these specials are on YouTube uh, so check them out if you, you, you are interested I guess we can try to get some links on there um on on our show notes, but um, they're easy to find. So with that, we are going to take a quick break and come back with geek news for you. And we're back and it's time for geek news for you. Uh, In this segment, we listen to the police siren go by. Do we do indeed? Uh, (laughs) <laughs> Breaking news. Hot news. Break, breaking news. <laughs> uh, in this segment, we bring a couple of news items to the table for discussion. Uh, this week, it's Liz and myself. So, Liz, uh, why don't you go ahead and go first? Okay. Um, my news item, it's actually a, a double hitter. Um, this was actually a report printed by Green Rant, but it was um, 
what is he calling it? Isn't this the Substack that Grant Morrison's posting on? I think it's Substack, but he calls it like the Xandium or something like that. Well, anyways, he's kind of been taking his whole career in comics and breaking it down. And um, he's gotten to the fourth issue so far of the multiverse. <laughs> it's like, I, you know, <laughs> I thought, you know, he had a whole book that explained that movie now or series. Now, when I first read this, just the title of this Watchmen killed American superheroes, according to Grant Morrison. This is the guy who I absolutely love for Klaus, who um, what did he do to Santa Claus? <laughs> so it's like I've got to see what he has to say about killing the superheroes, because, you know, like what he's done to. The multiverse. <laughs> but anyways, he kind of breaks it down. And the gist of it, I, I won't get into a lot of his um, his rant on this, because apparently he has a very strong dislike for Alan Moore and um, Watchmen. He thinks that the Watchmen being gritty and adult-like kind of changed the innocence that comics had, that they were no longer being wrote for kids. And um, what was another point that he made? I can't remember now. But anyways, he was basically saying that how it changed the tone of comics. And he's not happy about that. And, you know, after reading this, like I said, I, I will link this article because I, I won't get into a lot of my personal opinions of Grant Morrison because we don't have enough time for that. That's why. But, right. <laughs> you know. But I I will say Grant Morrison is love him or hate him. And I have a lot of his books that I love. And I have a lot of his books that I hate. And I have no books in between. <laughs> so I, a lot of his love books that I have, it's because he has taken some kind of topic, whether, you know, it's Santa Claus or even something as simple as Batman and kind of twist it. And so I found it kind of funny that he was upset because the audience that he writes for came out of adult comic books. What kids reading Klaus? What kids reading Arkham Asylum? What kid? You know what I'm saying? He's not writing for this audience that he's campaigning for. So I don't understand what his big beat was. Yeah. But you know. And it's kind of it's kind of funny he's talking that he's talking about Alan Moore ruining heroes because I remember and and Les will probably remember this too because I, I I know Mikey what didn't I know Mikey didn't read it but I'm pretty sure Les did one of the titles that Liefel created for Image was Supreme and it was a pure '90s hero that kind of attitude and all that Alan Moore came over and basically made it Silver Age Superman including bringing over all the alternate universe type of Supremes you know having a kid Supreme well there was a kid Supreme but I think there was Supreme Girl or something like that and just and all this it, it was like it, he brought back kind of the fun of of the fifties comics for for that yeah. character, I'm like so so I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, Watchmen is a deconstruction of the superheroes. I no one no one's going no one can argue that. But I don't know about the whole. I mean, the whole grim and gritty. I mean, God, that was Miller with Dark yeah. Knight Returns right. and, Alan and all that kind of stuff. Alone in that for sure. But he's not. No. He's not. He can't be. Yeah. He was so, a driving right. force, but he was not alone. So, yeah. So. Okay, and let's say that comic books didn't change, and they're still writing them for kids. I wouldn't be reading those stories right now. Would you? I, you know what? I, it, it's kind of... I feel like they had to change because sometimes you've got to look at what your readership is. And I can guarantee you, if you look at comics today... There's not a whole lot of five to twelve year olds that are reading comic books right now. And well, it, most comic book stores won't even stock a good comic collection for kids because there's just not that much of a demand for it. You know, 
it's mainly adults who are still reading their comic books from when they were kids. So if these comic books didn't change, do you think these adults would still be reading those comics? Maybe less. Is that a good question? (laughs) But, you know, I I feel like it kind of had to. And I also think that he's kind of being a hypocrite because of this change. His work is done well. There's a lot of people who absolutely love Grant Morrison, and it's not because he's writing for kids, and it's not kids who are worshiping him. So maybe he needs to check out his own age of fan base, you know? I I don't know. I I just felt like he was bitching about something that has helped him. Well, and I I would argue that the change of the style of of who was – the books were being written to happened a lot earlier than that. It happened. It happened when Marvel came up because you think a 10 year old kid thinks uh, cares about the fact that Peter Parker's trying to come up with money to, for rent or, or it may needs a heart operation for the 15th time. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, and you know, or meanwhile, Superman is dealing with a, an alien from a, alternate universe that's come in here and turn them into plaid or some such. It's so, you know, I, there was di- di- definitely two distinct different styles going on in the sixties with those two companies. Yeah. So now wasn't it Morrison who wrote, um, speedy as a heroin addict? No, that was, uh, Denny O'Neill. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Nice try. Yeah, I could have sworn that was Morrison. But wasn't he also known as the character killer for, for a while because he's killed a few? <laughs> you know? Hell, who it, hadn't? Right. Yeah, but he, I would say probably early 2000s. I don't know exactly what he was working on then. Maybe a little later than that. But it seemed like every character he got a hold of, it just like he had to. Either kill them or they were just not good people. <laughs> you know, I I think the whole thing I, I, well, is the point of, like I said, he he has wrote into this and he's profited off of it. And now he's kind of like, oh, it should have never changed. Well, of course it should have, because he's never wrote a book like he's talking about, you know, for a kid. Well, and, and I mean, part of what the thing we don't really have to do is give a shit what he says. Right. <laughs> I mean, this is, I mean, the, the deal is that what that, that article that, that you clicked on it was clickbait. It was, it was total. a totally, it was but... a title that was intended to sucker you in and guess what? It worked. Yeah. Um, but, but the deal I... is it, you, it doesn't, it, okay. He, he's ranting about some shit that doesn't mean anything. Okay. It's just, Move yeah. on. You don't have to analyze it. You don't have to blame him. You don't have to yell at him. You don't have to care. Well, the the thing of it is, though, I am a follower and a reader of his newsletter. I he has it, like I said, there are some books that Grant Morrison has wrote that I absolutely love. And right now, at this stage in his career that he's kind of retired from, I I like hearing. You know, stories of how did Klaus come about? What the hell made him think of that? You know, so what made him pick Dan Mora? And in these newsletters, he kind of breaks all that down. And here's what I was thinking. And here's where comics were at this point. So it's not all of it that I'm like, oh, my, you know, I'm not hate reading. But this one in particular, I guess I'm not liking this series because he's getting now into his career of the multiverse, which for me, I didn't understand the multiverse. I absolutely hated that. I needed a book to explain to me what he was doing in the multiverse. So it was just kind of, he lost me there. And now I'm finding out part of why he lost me was because of some vendetta he had against Alan Moore and Watchmen. So it's kind of like, what, you know, so it's, so, so and then it's to turned find in, out so it's why, turned into tea, that's what you're saying. It has. That part of it has, you know. Okay, never mind. You're good. Forget I said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I am certainly not going to argue with that. 
But, you know, this isn't the first time Grant Morrison has come out and said something bad about Alan Moore. So I just really don't think these two guys get along at all. Okay. But the reasons that he gives that he doesn't like him are the exact same reasons why Grant Morrison is popular today. So it's kind of like, you know, you, you hated the guy who paved the way for you. Right? Everybody hates Alan or Moore. Come on. That style? Oh, well, yeah. But, Perfectly you know, normal to hate Alan Moore. You can, but you also have to admit some of his work was freaking great. You know, uh, he, he knew what he was doing. I liked The Watchmen. I, I didn't see it as a um, killer of the, the innocent age, as he puts it. I, I saw it as kind of a, oh, you know, superheroes don't normally do this, <laughs> you know. And to me, that was interesting. It didn't mean I still didn't like the, the Boy Scout that Superman was or, or, you know, that kind of thing. But it was kind of like, wow, I kind of like this. I was growing up at the time when that came out, and it was kind of like a, now you can read grown-up comics, you know. Without boobies. Well, not Watchmen, but, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I I just saw it as a graduation, I guess. And he's seeing it as doom. It's so bad it made his career. He's, <laughs> I mean, a, he's a writer. He's supposed to see everything as doom. Right. And yeah. Also, and also doom sells. So, you know, he's trying to sell newsletters. It's it's all good. Well, he's actually trying to sell the fourth book of his multiverse. What was it? Pan. What was it called? Pax Americana. Because that's where he says he kind of. Not parody, but kind of showed what was wrong with Watchmen. Mm-hmm. And that's where um, Yellow Jacket gets shot in the head. So, but yeah, like I said, I, I just, I thought it was kind of, hmm. Okay. You're mad at them for killing superheroes. How many people are mad at you for killing Santa Claus? (laughs) I'm not, but (laughs) But yeah. So like I said, I, I just, I, I kind of saw it as kind of hypocritical. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. But I will send you the link for it to link for this. Um, I will have to check to see if his newsletter, I, I do pay, see, and that's another thing. I pay to read some of these newsletters from him. So I'll, I'll have to double check to make sure that wasn't a paywall one, mm. but I will link it if not. I think that was the problem I had. Yeah. And actually Pax Americana is actually taking four Art. So there's actually four parts to this story that Screen Rant has kind of condensed down into the main. He hates Alan Moore. <laughs> mm, okay. Boy, that sounds like news. Let me tell you. Mm. Well, well, no, I like I said, the news part to me was him thinking that Alan Moore killed the superheroes, especially some of the rants that Alan Moore's given out right now about superheroes. So it's kind of like. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm, kind of makes you think that maybe Moore had an uptick in sales when he started ranting about stuff recently, and Grant Morrison saw this and was like, hey, I can do that. Well, I don't know, because like I said, he's been doing this series in a, in in order of his career. So it could be why more um, more came out and said something, but so well, yeah. more more says something because someone goes up to more and, and asks him the question. That's that's the thing, because it seems like he pops up all the time and he goes he 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 says he says something, and all of a sudden everybody else picks up on it and then you know he blows up for for a week or so and then he, and then it's gone again and it's, it's just like you know what if you don't ask those questions mm-hmm. it's just it's it's just like they want them to 
Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just, it's just like, it's just like the, the directors, the where the, the interviewers go up and say, "Well, what do you think about Marvel films?" Well, oh my God, let me da 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 da, and all of a sudden that trip. Yeah, he hates it. Yeah. And so you know, yeah, the, the director thinks that that it's not legitimate film or da da whatever. It, it it it's literally done. It's like Mike said, clickbait. That's that's all they're doing. And that's yeah. what happened here with Alan Moore. Right, they're asking random so, questions to get a, to see if they get a rise out of somebody. That's all they're they, doing. They're, they're asking they're asking him a question. He that they know he's gonna he's gonna have some kind of a rant. He's gonna say something that's gonna be quotable for clickbaits for everybody to use. That's I, that's all that's going on now. Yeah. And then and then Alan Moore will disappear for a while again. It's like nobody cares. It's, it's it's kind of sad, but that seems like that's what that's all he's good for for some people. Right, it's and, just, and, and it all I mean, if you want to talk about hypocrisy, we're sitting here bitching about this about what we do with our little news segment here. Yeah, I mean, we're we're kind of biting the hand that feeds us a little bit. We're bitching about um, the state of modern journalism in a segment where we're pulling stuff out of the news and talking <laughs> yeah. about it True. right i mean you kind of, kind of can't escape from it yeah. who wrote so, so... Oh, go ahead. no i was just gonna say i found it interesting what some of the comments he made and how he explained why he did what he did it's not all tea right well, I mean, a I mean, lot of it yeah. is yeah <laughs> I mean, and that's fine. It, 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 I, 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 I'm always interested in trying to figure out how or find out how creators come up with their ideas. It's, it's always kind of interesting. So, you know, I mean, that's fine, but, you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah. What were you going to say, Les? Who wrote Miracle Man? Miracle Man was Neil Gaiman. Okay, because I thought that that would be one that they'd go after. That one, to me, ruined superheroes. But obviously, not and, for them. And, and it's funny, I thought about this the other day, because, you know, there are certain to come out with new, I think it's new material or it's delayed material, I don't, I don't know. But the fact that they're still calling him Miracle Man, even though Marvel owns the character now, I find interesting. Because he was originally Marvel Man, but when they started trying to do new books back in the 80s, they couldn't use Marvel because, because Marvel owned They trademarked it. Trademark. Yeah. So now that Marvel owns him and the trademark, you think they would go back to Marvel Man, but... Th- but it's probably I, I, better known as Miracle Man at this point. True. I, uh, at this point, after them do, releasing what they have done the last several years, but I mean, once once they got him, they could have said, "Hey, this is Miracle Man." I mean, this is Marvel Man. And I mean, they said, "Hey, we got Miracle Man." I'm sure there was a lot of Marvel fans going, "Who the hell is this?" So yeah, I, I don't know, but the names out there they can do they can do a Marvel Man now, yeah. If they want to do something like that, I I, I don't know. I just thought it was funny. I, I thought that was kind of uh, uh, opportunities they missed, but uh, yeah, I mean you could be right that they were wanting to build on what has come along with with, with that name. So I so yeah, I mean you're probably right. Okay, well, I do have a news item, hmm. and it's kind of funny that this this came down. <laughs> this came down after what was discussed last week. There is another famous house from an eighties film that is up for sale. Oh wow! It is the house from the Goonies. <laughs> it's located in Astoria, Oregon. Um, the house is over 125 years old. 
um, uh, it's a three bedroom, two bathroom Victorian house. Guess what the asking price is? In Oregon, one point two million. One billion dollars. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> wow, I haven't had that one in a while. Jeez. <laughs> I should have done it with a, the, the asking price without going over, but less I already kind of ruined that. You were close, Mike. 1.65. Oh, hey. Cool. Damn. Was that damn because he was close or damn because you it wonder a about lot of money. the price? Right. That's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the current owner bought the house in 2001 and fully restored it. Because apparently it was in pretty sad shape before the end. Being 125 years old, I can't say that I'm surprised. Yeah. So. Hmm. And according to the, this article, in addition to the, the a Christmas story house, um, in 2020, the home that where they used um, for the character Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs went up for sale. Oh, dang. So. Got a great basement. Mm, yeah, I bet. <laughs> so, yeah, if you got 1.65 million just laying around, you can have this nice looking house. Sure. Let me just, you know. Go grab that from the basement. <laughs> Don't get to rub the lotion on it. Jeez. <laughs> right. Put it in the basket. <laughs> uh, like I said, three bedroom, two baths, 2336 square feet, 0. 0.08 acre. 0. 0.08? Yes. No. So it's not even an acre of 0. land. 0. 0.8. Zero point it says... Eight. It's zero. Oh. It says 0. .08 acres. Yeah, I'm looking can, at the listing right that here. That can't be right, though. You couldn't That's fit a, a house on it on eight uh, hundredths of an acre. Uh, it says square uh, lot square footage is three thousand four hundred eighty four, and the house is two twenty three thirty six. So it has like no yard. So so there's 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 no yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the pictures, and it looks like there's a little bit of, I mean, not much, but. Yeah. Oh, and actually it says pending. Wow. So, too late. Damn. Now i got to go back in the basement and put this money away. <laughs> and I'm looking at the interiors. It looks nice. I mean, the dude's been, obviously the dude's spent a lot of money fixing it up, and it looks great. Especially for a 125 year old home. Hmm. So. Oh well. Yeah, it's too old a house. I'm not doing it. Also, yeah. I don't have 1.6 million dollars sitting around. Yeah. What? I know. Well, hard to have my it. chance. All right. Okay, uh, any special shout-outs or mentions this week? Mm, nope, I'm good. No, not that I can think of. Appreciate the thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do have one or two. Uh, Shout-out to Cole Houston and Eddie Medina, uh, who are friends of the Fellowship. Uh, long-time listeners would probably remember the name of Eddie. He's been on the show a few times. Um, their show, The Rancor Pit, Rancor Pit, actually came to an end yesterday as we're filming, uh, as we're recording this. So it's the 27th. They, uh, they, they did their final live podcast after nine years. Uh, nine years at twice. You know, twice a month, so that's, yeah, that's, that's a lot of episodes. That's twenty, yeah, twenty-four episodes a year for nine years. That's quite a bit. Uh, Cole also ended his Isle of Toys live podcast. Um, he's just take, kind of taking a break and kind of wanting to figure out what his next step's going to be. He's he's a really good guy, a real good friend of the, of the show. 
a uh, really hard worker. Uh, he, for one of the cons here, all con, it's usually in mid March. He does a lot of programming, a lot of game shows, and and moderator for some of the panels and all that. So he's usually working really hard on on that. He's a great guy. Um, so wish wish him well. Eddie, like I said, he's been with us before. Um, uh, his his live pod, live uh, podcast figments has been on hiatus for a while. Uh, don't really know where the where things stand there, but uh, it, that was a really good show. With and then also I had his wife Colleen on. Um, so. Sad to sad to hear that the these shows were ending. Uh, they were always fun to watch, mm-hmm. but um, you know, wish them the best, and they're always welcome to come on with us and chit chat about anything. So definitely want to shout out to them. Yep. Yep. All right, we'll move on to our regular shout outs. I want to thank Pop Goes the Culture Podcast Network for allowing us to be part of a great group of. Fellow podcast, we want you to check them out. There will be a link in the show notes. Uh, we also want you to check out the fine men and women who have been so kind as to spread the word of the fellowship by retweeting our tweets on uh, as Pottered Family. The best way to check them out is just do a search, hashtag Potter and Family, all one word. Scroll through whatever catches your attention. Click on that link and download that episode. We hope you have a great time listening to them. I also want to thank Mayo Murder for supplying music to our podcast. Uh, in our show notes, we'll have a link where you can check out their music. And finally, you, dear listener, thank you for downloading and listening to today's episode. We value your feedback. Any comments, questions, suggestions, complaints, observations, what have you, please send them our way. There are several ways you can do that. Um, Email at the fellowship of the geeks.net is our email address. Or you can go to the website, go to the About Us page, and there's a contact form you can fill out. Social media, we're on Facebook, the Fellowship of the Geeks. Uh, we're on Instagram, at Fellowship Geeks. We are now on uh, Hive Social, as at Fellowship Geeks as well. And we're obviously on Twitter, again, once again, at Fellowship Geeks. So feel free to follow us all there. Uh, if you'd like to follow our personal Twitter accounts, Mike can be found at Mikey Geek. Liz can be found at LN underscore Geek. Les may or may not be found at Fake Les Webster. And I can be found at Tom TC Geek. And from wherever you download, our episodes. If you take a couple extra moments to rate and review the show, it would be greatly appreciated. Anything else before we say goodbye? Just thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Appreciate you listening. Thank you for listening. We appreciate the support as always. Until next time, geek on, my friends. We thank you for listening to the show. Comments, suggestions, and questions can be sent to email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. You can follow us on Facebook at The Fellowship of the Geeks and on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Until next time, 